It's Monday, May 27th, 2019, 1.18 p.m. Pacific time. McKenna Denson had just sent me a message, asked me if I'm free to chat for a quick sec. I said, you bet. Give me a call. McKenna she is... Denson. There you go. She's calling me right now, like clockwork. Yellow. Hey, I won't, I won't keep you long. I know you're busy. So I talked to my therapist this morning, and she said it's very likely that I had a, a fake cancer fundraiser. And I asked her why I don't remember it. And she's not sure. She said maybe it's a DID episode because there were. Doesn't matter. Or maybe it's something I, w I did and I am so embarrassed and ashamed of that I've blocked it out. <clears throat> she said we're going to work on figuring it out. Um, but either way, I need to own it, um, whether it was DID, um, where I was an altar, actually, um, or if it's something that I actually did. So we're going to get to the bottom of that, and I'm going to own it no matter what the reason is or however you want to look at that. If I did that, I need to figure out why I did that and why I don't remember were you, you know, have you been diagnosed with DID? Um, I have been, yes. Who was, uh, who was the thing, doctor? Who was the doctor that diagnosed you, and how long ago was well, it? Well, hang on a second. At first, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Who was the doctor that diagnosed that? Um, Wilborn. Do you know where where that was? Yeah, it's in Colorado Springs. So Colorado Springs, Dr. Wilborn diagnosed you with multiple personality disorder? No, he diagnosed me with borderline personality okay. disorder. Okay. Because DID is harder to diagnose. But the person I'm working with now is working with me understanding some other things that have to do with, with DID, which I didn't know I had until a few months ago. So... But here's the thing. It does not matter, Mike, whether it's something I feel so ashamed of that I hid to myself and blocked out or whether it was DID episode. It doesn't matter. If I did that, it doesn't matter what the consequences are. I have to own that. And I just need to understand why I don't remember that. So either way, I'm going to – if I did that, I need to own it. And it doesn't matter how many supporters I lose or who no longer wants to be my friend. If I really did that, I need to, I need to own it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it would have been nice if you had started last night when I told you point blank that I knew you lied to me about uh, not being the pot, no pot of gold person on Reddit. I could see your mind spinning. You were trying to figure out how to get out of that. And, and I don't know, at least that's what it seemed like to me. But no, I was trying to figure out the way to explain to you that I didn't trust you, that I didn't, that I, I don't, I don't trust anybody. Well, that's, that's ironic considering that you're the one that has lied to countless people for literally 40 years. So why you don't trust people is I don't know if it's self projection or what, but but you have you have told some whoppers of lies, and I'm gonna be frank with you, I've spent about 40, 50 hours over the last seven days investigating McKenna Denson, A.K.A. June Hughes, born July 18th, 1962, and I'm pretty disturbed by what I find. Well. Okay, if you don't want to be my friend, Mike, you don't have to be. Well, you have to understand, it goes a little bit beyond not wanting to be your friend. I don't trust you as far as I could throw you. And the video that you so graciously advertised on your web webpage that's coming out at 2 p.m. today uh, in little more than half an hour is an expose of you. I'm telling everybody everything about you. I think you're a pathological liar. I think you're a professional con artist. Whether you have multiple disorder, personality disorders or not, uh, I think I think it's complete and total. I have rock solid evidence that you told multiple people four months before the Drano incident that you told them some crazy story about how one time somebody spiked your orange juice with Drano. That happened four months 
and nine days before you claim to the police that it actually happened. I don't believe a word you're saying. Remember last night when I told you the story about Chris and Becky Tucker and how they were horrible monsters who threw children down flights of stairs, and I think they were the worst people I've ever met in my entire life? In the video that I'm releasing at 2 p.m., I bring up the Tuckers. I told you last night that I wanted to tell you today about something. I actually, this past week, found one person that may actually be worse than Chris and Becky Tucker. Her name is June Marie Hughes, a.k.a. McKenna Denson. I think you are a monster, and I am going to expose you to everybody for the monster you are. And by the time I'm done, you will be lucky if your own attorney is still on your side. You are so completely and honestly, you're standing here in front of me. Let me tell you, I've never hit a woman in my life, but I would break your nose. You are a worthless McKenna. You faked cancer multiple times and took money from people to help you pay for your cancer. Do you think those people are going to be less likely to donate money to people in the future that have cancer? I think so. You are literally taking money out of the pockets of children with cancer. You have accused at least five men of raping you. One of those poor sat in jail for months and faced prosecution and thank he was found not guilty. You are a monster. I can't wait to see you go down in a ball of flames. Your book will never happen. Your movie will never happen. Your lawsuit against, against Joseph Bishop, FYI, newsflash for you, you, I've been cooperating with David Jordan. I have recorded every single conversation you and I have had for weeks, and I'm going to burn you with a stake. You hear me? You're done, McKenna. Done. Somebody said to me, what are you going to do if she commits suicide? Big deal. One less horrible monster on the face of the earth. Do what you got to do, McKenna, but I'm going to burn you to the ground. Got anything okay. to say about that? Go ahead. No. By the way, this call is being recorded as well, and this will probably go on YouTube. You got anything I to say, have... monster? I have nothing to say, Mike. I'm sorry. You feel that way. Oh, it's not that I feel that way. Rock solid evidence proves that I'm that I'm right. The police came to the same conclusion. You are a monster. You swallowed razor blades while you were pregnant, 12 weeks pregnant, just in an effort to get money out of P.F. Chang's. You drank Drano in an effort to get sympathy. You torched your own car. You are a lying pathological, in my opinion. I want nothing to do with you, ever. And let me tell you something. You know where I live. Show up at my house and you get a bullet between your head, your eyes. I will assume that if Mike. you show up at my house, you are here to cause trouble. Nobody in their Mike. right mind. What, McKenna? Go ahead. Give me your excuses. Go ahead. Let me hear it. You're not going to con your way out of this one, McKenna. Go ahead. Uh, I have nothing to say. Good. You shouldn't say anything other than uh, I, I uh, choose to plead the fifth. Officer, FYI, I've talked to the Pueblo Police Department and given them all this information. David Jordan has all this information. Good luck with your lawsuit, McKenna, because I will be there to testify against you if I need to be. You are the worst human being I have ever met. And I have met people who have thrown toddlers down flights of stairs. Anything else you want to say to me? Because this is the last time you and I are ever going to talk. No. Okay. I until until I see you in court, by the way. And trust me, I got a real good feeling you and I are going to meet again. Anything else you want to say? Nope. All right. That's probably wise. You might want to call your lawyer right now, and you might want to call other people and tell them, Mike Norton's on to me. You're a grifter, McKenna. You are a grifter. You go from one state to the next to the next, and eventually you made such a bad name for June Hughes and June Denson, you decided to change your name. McKenna's not a childhood nickname. It's not a middle name. It's just a name that you picked out of thin air because, oh, your excuse was you didn't like the way that your stepfather and Joseph Bishop um, uh, said the name June. And so in your 30s, you decided you're going to just change your name all of a sudden. And now you're going to go by McKenna instead of June. That's how grifters work. They change their name. They change their identity. You are a horrible, horrible monster. 
and I am absolutely appalled that you have gotten away with what you've gotten away with this for as long as you have. You really need to watch the video at 2 p.m., and I hope you have the audacity to show up at my house or sue me for slander or accuse me of raping you, which is your, your M.O., whatever you want to do, bring it on, you stupid... Sure you don't well, have a thing to say? Now. Nothing you want to add to this, McKenna? Because thousands and thousands of people will listen to this conversation. What would you like to say to those people? Oh, I hope you feel better now that you've got all that out there. I feel so much better. You know, I'm going to feel Thank so you. much better at 2 p.m. By the way, everybody knows about this already. I've already talked in advance with everybody from Sam Young to John DeLynn to Lindsay Hanson Park, Jonathan Streeter. I've talked to so many people over the last week and told them, McKenna Denson cannot be trusted. Trust me, do not believe a word she says. And every single one of them, after I presented the evidence to them, realized I suspect it for a while. You know what your mistake was, McKenna? Here's the big mistake you made. Making the absolutely ridiculous accusations that somebody came into your house, laced your orange juice with Drano, then three days later they torched your car, then seven days later, there was a conspiracy because two men were there and they assaulted you. You're telling me that 15 years after you were assaulted at gunpoint where two men, you told the police, two men, black men, it's always black men, you racist, two men showed up, one of them had a Glock, he smacked you upside the head, knocking you unconscious and put you in your trunk. 15 years later, last night when we talked, you couldn't even remember the, how many men there were. Was there one man? Was there two men? You can't keep your story straight. And so then you throw out this, I've got dissociative identity disorder. Yeah, you're mentally ill, all right. Get some help. Do what you got to do. Stay away from me. Your, your, your little money pod train here with the ex-Mormon community is done at 2 p.m. today. Nobody in their right mind would give you money after this. As far as Ethan is concerned, I think Ethan's just got a the case of sour grapes. I don't think he has. Ethan's got it on you. He's got you lying to a clerk to get your car out of impound. Big deal. Who cares? Who wouldn't do that? What I have and what the police have on you, so much bigger than that. Anybody who fakes having cancer and raises money so that they can pay for their non-existent cancer treatment, and then when they supposedly find out they don't have cancer that they don't bother telling their friends and family members that they don't have cancer because they like, as you told one person in writing, they like the love and attention that they were getting so they didn't want it to end. What kind of a monster tells friends and families, I have cancer, and then when she finds out she doesn't, which, by the way, I don't believe any of that. I don't think you had cancer. I, don't think, I think it's all fiction. And if you actually were stupid enough to sign an authorization to release information to me so that I could get copies of all your medical records, I would prove that beyond any reasonable doubt. The chances of you being, I've talked to doctors about this, the chances of you being diagnosed with the kind of rare bone cancer that you suggested is so astronomical, that's like a doctor telling you that you have AIDS. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, did I say AIDS? I, I, meant, I meant herpes, my bad. I'm, did I say AIDS? Yeah, that was, a, that, was a, that was a typo. You are so, you are a monster, a monster. There are children who actually have cancer, who are trying to raise money desperately to save their lives, and there's you out there faking cancer and collecting money. I seriously, I hope you, again, tens of thousands of people will listen to this recording. Anything you want to say to them, you want to take ownership, start apologizing right now, you I'm good. No, no, you don't want to apologize to everybody you lied to? You don't want to apologize to the five men that you accused of rape? David, you don't want to apologize to David, who was prosecuted and acquitted of rape? No, he needed to be prosecuted. Oh, did he? You need to be prosecuted, June. I am your worst nightmare. Count on it. Goodbye. Don't ever talk to me again. I'll see you in court. Oh, that felt good.